to part one of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'm going to be talking about three things that you need to know to start using Blender. The first thing we'll be talking about is how to view and navigate through your viewport within the main 3D viewport window in Blender's user interface. The second thing we'll be talking about is how to move and transform objects, which includes moving objects, rotating objects, and scaling objects. And the last thing we'll be talking about in this video is how to add new objects. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll notice that in this video I'm using Blender 2.70a, and if you're using a new version that's totally okay. I guarantee, unless I come up with an update to this video, in which case you'll see a, a big kind of banner or notification on this window right now, that everything is exactly the same in any newer version of Blender for the long foreseeable future. Let's go ahead and get started by clicking on the splash screen. Now when Blender first loads up, of course, you see the Blender's default user interface and the main part of the screen, the biggest part, is this 3D view window. When the scene first loads, you get three objects. You get a cube, you get a, a lamp, a light source, and a camera. Now other 3D programs like Maya or 3ds Max, they don't give you these objects, they just give you an empty scene but when they first made Blender, they decided to give you three objects right away. Uh, the first thing we're going to be talking about is how to zoom in and out. And this is why, or one of the reasons why, you need to have a good wheel mouse when you're using Blender. The most common question I get is, do you need to use a mouse? Can we use a trackpad instead? And the answer is, sadly, well, you can use a trackpad, but really it makes it very hard and cumbersome really for Blender or any graphics program in general, you need a mouse with, and with Blender you need a scroll wheel. Uh, because when you scroll in and out, you're zooming in and out. That's the first thing I want to show you. When you scroll up, you zoom in. When you scroll down, you zoom out. Now I'm using a Mac in this video, and so with Mac by default comes that natural uh, scroll direction, which means that the scrolling up and down is reversed. So actually when I scroll up, I'm zooming out, and when I scroll down, I'm zooming in. Uh, you might have that if you have a Mac. Otherwise, it's scrolling up to zoom in and uh, down to zoom out. The reason why you need a wheel mouse specifically is that if you want to orbit around your scene, in other words, rotate your view to look at the other side of an object, or the other side of your scene, or the bottom uh, or other angles of your scene, you need to press your middle mouse button in like a button. So pressing your wheel down like a button and then dragging your mouse in the 3D viewport will let you change your view and this is called orbiting. Okay, You can orbit to see the bottom or any other side of an object and this is how you can see your scene in full 3D to make sure that everything is the way it should be and just to look at your scene from different angles. The last thing I'm going to talk about, or the third way of manipulating the viewport of your scene with your mouse, is just like if you were to just to strafe left and right in a 3D first person shooter game. In other words, when you step left and step right as a character, it's called strafing. In Blender, it's called panning. And to pan, you hold shift down and you uh, orbit. So you hold shift down on your keyboard and you press your mouse wheel down like a button and you drag left and right and you can even drag up and down. And this is a case, let's say you zoom in and you want to see your cube at, at this zoomed in level. Well, you can then pan over and see the cube or you can even keep going or above or below the cube. So panning with the shift key and orbiting is, a, is another way of na navigating through your 3D viewport. Now Blender is very keyboard shortcut oriented and a lot of the things I'll be talking about in Blender have keyboard shortcuts including shortcuts to different views. If you have a number pad on your keyboard of your computer, in other words one of those number sections on the right side of your keyboard, you'll be able to use those to change to your front view, your right and left views, your top view, but if you don't have a number pad you can go ahead and go down to the view menu and you'll see different uh, selections here for or items here for looking at your scene from the front um, and then you can go to the view and go to the top view but I'll use my keyboard shortcuts so the one number on my number pad and unfortunately this will not work on your number row I'll show you how to make that work in the next video when we talk about Blender's user interface and set up Blender's preferences to work a little bit easier. But for now, if I press 1 on my numpad only, it'll switch to my front view, and you can see up here it says front ortho. If I press 3, it goes to my right ortho view, and 7 goes to my top ortho view. 
And you might be wondering, well, how do I get to, let's say, if I want to see the front, how do I see the back? Well, if you hold control, it does the opposite of any one of those three things. So if I press hold control and press one, it goes to the back view. If I press control and press three, it goes to the left instead of the right view. And hold control and press seven, it goes to the top or bottom view in this case. The top is seven, control seven is bottom. And so those are three really good, useful keyboard shortcuts. Whenever people are starting off in 3D, I recommend that they use these three views exclusively when they're doing any animation or doing any positioning or modeling of an object because things seem less distorted from these directions. Now I want to quickly talk about what the 5 key does. The 5 key in that number pad toggles between perspective view and orthographic view. Perspective view is how you're seeing the scene right now and how you see the real world. When things get farther away, I'm just going to drag this cube back with my Y axis or green arrow. When things get farther away, they get smaller. As you can see, the cube is small because it's far in the distance. I move it closer, it gets bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. But if I press 5, it toggles over to orthographic view. And as you can see, I'm just going to toggle kind of back and forth. When you're in an orthographic view, it says ortho. And things do not get smaller smaller when they get farther away and this is more like a video game like The Sims or SimCity uh, which use a similar sort of a view. There are other games like that as well especially lots of those strategy games on the iPad um, views that you know you're seeing a lot of things at the same time. So if I drag this cube back into the distance you'll notice that you know it is going far back but it's not getting any smaller and it's actually this view that I recommend for at least beginner users because Things seem less distorted this way. Things look more like they uh, should, or at least give you a better sense of scale or a better sense of shape with this. Believe it or not, you would think that maybe perspective does, but actually orthographic keeps things simple. When you're viewing from a front and side and top, you always want to be using orthographic, and I believe now it does switch to orthographic automatically as soon as you press 1, 3, or 7. So that's navigating your viewport. You can use your mouse to orbit around like I am right now with your middle mouse button pushed in. You can zoom in and out. You can pan with the shift and orbit buttons. Um, you can use one, three, and seven. And that's all good and great, but what about moving objects and transforming objects? And this is number two in this video, uh, moving and transforming objects. So when you are moving and scaling and rotating, those are the three ways that you can transform an object. You can translate it, which means move it, you can rotate it, and you can scale it. There's a few different ways of doing that. And again, Blender is very keyboard shortcut oriented. If I go to one of my three views, one, three, or seven, I'll go to my front view. If I want to grab this object and move it around, all I have to do is have it selected, in, in which case you would right click on things. And that's another weird thing about Blender. Selecting objects is with the right mouse button, which is the opposite of most programs, which confuses people right away. But I assure you, you get used to it. If you have that object selected and you want to grab it and move it around, you can just press G for grab. And as soon as you tap G, the object that's selected gets kind of stuck to your mouse and you can move it and you can click. Notice how when I'm looking from the front, I can only move things side to side and up and down. I can't move things perpendicular to my view. In other words, I can't move things forward and backwards towards me or away from my view. So I can only move things with G left and right and up and down, or in this case, on the X and on the Z axes. If I view from the side or the right, I can then move things with the grab towards where I was just looking from and then go back to that front view. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. Okay, so the G key is for grab, and that's a very handy tool. What if I want to rotate? Well, if G is for grab, then it makes sense that R is for rotate. So the R key, when you tap it, again from the front or side or top views, you can then rotate your mouse in a circle and it'll rotate that object. And again, you're rotating perpendicular from your view. In other words, you cannot rotate in this manner towards you or away from you, only side to side um, in, in both directions. So you're moving your mouse in a circle. All right, so we've talked about moving by grabbing. We've talked about rotating with the R key. To scale things, it's again pretty obvious. I'm going to quickly undo that rotation so everything's kind of flush again. Scale is the S key. 
And the S key, if you tap it once, will let you scale an object bigger or smaller by dragging your mouse away from the middle of the object or closer to the middle of the object. Now this is where things kind of get interesting. Because this is reliant on where your mouse is, you want to not have your mouse kind of right in the middle of the object when you press S, because that makes it very difficult to make it smaller or control it, because your mouse distance away from the center is how you're scaling it in proportion to the distance the mouse travels. So what I suggest is that you have your mouse, before you press S, you put your mouse somewhere between the edge of, the, of that window and the middle of the object. So right about there, and then tap S. Then I've got lots of control. I can really fine tune how I'm moving things, and I can even you know keep moving to the right. And as you can see, my mouse cursor is looping. So I can make that uh, object big by having my mouse go off one side of the screen and on the other automatically. Alright, so that is S. Notice how it's scaling things proportionally. It's not stretching the cube at all. In fact, I can switch out to a kind of a, a user view here. I can scale things and it's staying a square cube but just getting bigger and smaller. The next way to transform objects is by using what's called the gizmo. And the gizmo are these three arrows that are coming out of the object that you have selected. Notice how if I have my lamp selected, it has those arrows coming out of it too. Same thing with the camera, but we'll just keep on using the cube. Uh, if I drag on any of these one arrows, it'll move that object in only that one direction. So this is a good tool to use if you're looking from some sort of a user perspective view or a user orthographic view. Uh, to move your objects around on any of the three axes. Now this brings me to the, the other thing that thing that's in this window is your axes display. Down at the bottom left of your screen you'll see your axes displayed and as you orbit in your scene you'll see those axes kind of follow the global axes of your scene or your viewport and you'll notice your gizmo also always follows your axis or your three axes. So if you rotate around you'll see the axes kind of follow the main uh, red and green and uh, and blue lines. Okay, so I can grab any of these things and move it. Don't get in the habit, please, of dragging from the middle of that white circle. If you do that, you're, uh, you're moving things in a not very predictable way. It's hard to tell right now that I'm not actually moving this, this cube directly up and down. I'm actually moving it sort of um, closer to me or closer, yeah, closer towards me as I move it down and farther away from me as I move it up because I'm viewing my scene from a kind of an up diagonal view downwards. So always use your arrows to uh, move with the gizmo. But that's only one kind of gizmo. You can also rotate and scale with the gizmo. I'm just going to quickly put my cube back to where it was and maybe scale it back down again. Put it back down in the middle there. So this is the move gizmo and to switch over to the rotate or scale gizmo you can look down here on the header bar of your 3D viewport. Your 3D viewport is the largest part of the screen. The header is actually at the bottom of it by default and this section here next to the word global is your gizmo section. I can turn the gizmo off and on with this gizmo button that hides it so if you ever lose it you know to go back there and click it to make it show up again. Your first gizmo is the move gizmo or translate gizmo. The second gizmo is your rotate gizmo and this gives you what I like to call my hula hoops. So if I grab any one of these hula hoops, and again I don't want to grab just the middle of it, I want to grab one of the three colors, if I grab the blue hula hoop it'll rotate it or like rotate the cube as if there's a pole going up and down on that z-axis through my cube. And then I just rotate my or drag my cursor in a circle, directly a circle on my screen. I don't have to move it in like a perspective circle, I can just move it in a round circle on my screen and let go when I'm happy with it. Again, I can grab the red hula hoop and uh, it'll rotate this cube as if it were uh, there were a pole running through the cube on that red X axis. And then I just move my mouse cursor in a circle on the screen and I let go when I'm happy. And of course I can control Z to undo. All right, the scale gizmo is very similar. I can uh, switch to it just down here and I can scale or stretch my cube in any direction. I can squash my, my cube flat on the z-axis and that's all good and great. Do notice here though that when I press S to scale, unlike with this gizmo, S transforms um, proportionally. That's what I was looking for. And so with the S key, everything scales proportionally and so we're not stretching that cube at all. If I use my gizmo, it's for when I want to scale you know, only in one direction or on one axis. So that's the difference there. 
The last and third thing I want to talk about in this video is how to add and delete objects. If I have an object selected and I don't want it anymore, in this case I'm going to get rid of my cube. When it's selected, you need to press either the delete key, not to be confused with the, the backspace key, the delete key is different, or the X, letter X on my keyboard, and that'll bring up the little confirmation, okay, yes, delete uh, window, and then you can just click and it'll get rid of that object. And so now let's talk about adding objects. Before I do that though, what the heck is this little crosshair thing on my screen? You'll notice that when you left click, when you normal click in your window, this little crosshair thing gets put wherever you click. And you'll notice that if you orbit around your scene, that little cursor actually moves with your scene. It's actually in 3D space. This thing is called your 3D cursor, as opposed to your mouse cursor. This 3D cursor is actually part of your scene. It doesn't actually show up when you make a movie, but what it's used for is wherever this 3D cursor is, is where new objects get put in your scene. And I'm just gonna quickly zoom all the way out. You'll notice that it does not change in scale, but it does represent one coordinate in the very middle in 3D space on the X, Y, and Z axes. So it's one coordinate in that space. If I zoom way out and then click somewhere way off into space and then zoom back in, I've lost my 3D cursor. So try not to do that, try not to lose it. If you ever do lose it, you can press, and again, this is where Blender is very keyboard shortcut oriented, you can press Shift C. And Shift C puts that 3D cursor right back in the middle at 0, 0, 0 in the coordinates in your scene, and it also zooms to see everything in your scene. It zooms to see the, the, th the middle of the scene and the uh, lamp and the camera. So again, if the 3D cursor is somewhere weird, press Shift C and it'll go back to the middle. So now that that three cursor is in the middle of the scene, I'm going to add a new object. I can do that in one of two ways. I can go down to the Add menu. Actually, there's lots of ways to add objects. The Add menu, and then in most cases, you're adding what's called a mesh. Meshes include a plane, which is just a flat square, a cube, a circle, which I never use because, or almost never use because it's just like, like a hula hoop with no volume at all, a UV sphere, which is most like a ball, an icosphere, which is sort of like a soccer ball, a cylinder, a cone, a grid, which I almost never use, a monkey, yeah, we'll get to that later, and a torus, which is like a donut. You can also add things by pressing, and again, this is Blender being very keyboard shortcut oriented, Shift A. With your mouse anywhere in the 3D viewport, Shift A brings up the add menu. So I'll be using that from now on. You can also go over here to your create tab. This is called your tool shelf and uh, it's part of your 3D viewport. And if I go to create, you can see, I can click on any of the meshes or any of the other kinds of objects. Yes, you can create new lamps and even you can create new cameras as well down here. Um, you can click on these. I never use these though. So we'll just be using Shift A. And I'm gonna add a cube. And so it gets added to where that 3D cursor is. Uh, remember that when you're a beginner, you should be using your one, three, and seven views. So I'm gonna go to my front view. I'm gonna add a cone over here. So I'll click to make my 3D cursor go there. I'll use Shift A and I'll add a new mesh. I'll add a cone. And again, I can use my move gizmo to move things the G key to grab, the R key to rotate, the S key to scale. Let's go ahead and add a monkey head over here. Yes, Blender has a monkey head. Shift A, mesh, monkey. The monkey's name is Suzanne, and that's sort of just the, the pet name they have for it. Most 3D programs have some sort of a more complicated object. Usually it's a, tea, a teapot, at least that is true in Maya and 3ds Max. And they have these objects so that you can do better texture and lighting tests in a scene with more complicated objects to see how things look, especially with lighting and shadows. Uh, in Blender's case, it's a monkey just, I guess, for fun. It's been there forever, so they stuck with it. So that's adding objects to your scene. Again, you can press X to delete objects, and you can use all the things I've taught you in this video to navigate and add and transform objects. So in this video, we've talked about how to change your view, how to transform objects, in other words, how to translate, move, rotate, and scale objects, and then how to add and delete objects in your scene. Now that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.